Good afternoon, everyone. It's Rob Timmings here from ECT for Health. Welcome to another KYJ Knowing Your Jargon. This is part six of our eight part video conference series on, on respiratory physiology. Uh, in this one, it's just a really quick one. It's defining respiratory failure. This concept of respiratory failure is a, is, a, is a little bit of a mystery kind of a term. Just at what point has somebody got respiratory distress and at what point is it considered to be respiratory failure? When is the diagnosis respiratory failure given? In a nutshell, it's about the amount of oxygen that's in somebody's blood. So as measured, by the uh, by arterial blood gases let's do a very quick review some terminology to start with respiratory failure comes in two different forms it is respiratory failure type 1 and type 1 respiratory failure is simply diagnosed by having a p a o2 that is a pressure of arterial oxygen that is considered to be less than 60 millimeters of mercury. So that's the diagnostic start point at which respiratory failure, the diagnosis of respiratory failure is given. Okay, so type one respiratory failure, a decrease in oxygen in the blood arterially measured on a set of arterial blood gases. So very, very briefly, let's have a look at what's considered to be normal so that we can get some perspective here. A normal PaO2 for a person breathing room air, which we've covered in previous videos, is an FiO2 of 21. No, that's wrong. You're screaming at the TV right now of 0.21, 21% or 0.21 is my FiO2. A, um, a PaO2, if somebody is breathing oxygen at a concentration of room air, FiO2 of 0.21, the PaO2 predictably should be 80, not equals, 80 to 100. And those values are in millimetres of mercury. Don't confuse this with oxygen saturations on the finger. Not, well, related, but not the same thing. This is the dissolved oxygen in the liquid plasma of your arteries measured on an arterial blood gas. 80 to 100 is considered to be normal. Now, it would make sense, therefore, that if I had less than 80, then I am hypoxemic. And that's the truth. You... You have a condition called hypoxemia. Hypoxemia. Let's write that one down. Hypox means hypo means low. Ox oxygen. A E M I A. For any North Americans that are watching, yes, we put an A in it. So hypoxemia literally means low blood. Oxygen and it's measured in arterial blood using an arterial blood gas. Right, that's hypoxemia below 80. But I could be hypoxemic but not in respiratory failure yet. Respiratory failure is not diagnosed until I'm so hypoxemic that my PaO2 drops below this magic 60. So this is where the magic 60 comes into play. Alrighty, so what's the other type? of respiratory failure. I'm so glad you asked. The other type of respiratory failure is obviously called type 2 respiratory failure. And it meets the criteria for type 1, so I have to have a PaO2 which is less than 60 millimetres of mercury But the two other criteria, I must also have a CO2, a PaCO2, carbon dioxide level, that is greater than, get my arrows right, greater than 45 millimetres of mercury. Up to 45 is normal. Greater than 45 with carbon dioxide, too much carbon dioxide. 
in my arterial blood and the pH of my blood, my arterial pH, must be less than 7.35, where a normal value, normal is 7.35 to 7.45, is considered to be a normal pH. If my pH should drop into acidosis below 7.35, and I have a CO2 that is greater than 45, and I have type 1 respiratory failure that is a, PO, a PAO2 of less than 60, then I have met the criteria for type 2. So really what we're looking at here is that collection of quite severe respiratory failure patients with often with CO2 retaining diseases like COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or chronic obstructive airways disease or chronic obstructive respiratory disease depending on what side of the Tasman you're on. So there it is, respiratory failure in a nutshell, type 1 low oxygen below 60, PaO2 below 60 and type 2 certainly is the same as type 1 but it adds hypercapnia and a respiratory acidosis on the top of that. That in a nutshell, respiratory failure. Join us for part seven, which is the next in our eight-part series on respiratory physiology and the jargon therein. Hope that helps. See you guys. Bye.